Hello, hello, hello. So we are here um, to talk about one of the pride of the items of pride in Prescott, and that's the Prescott Elks Theater. So why don't you folks introduce yourselves, and then let's you know let's tell the people of Prescott what makes this building so cool, and about some of the things they probably don't know about. Okay, uh, my name is Steve Kartstein. I am the marketing program director at the Elks Theater and Performing Arts Center, and this. Yeah, my name is Trevor Odom. I'm the uh, assistant uh, marketing and programs director over there as well. Yeah. So, um, why don't you pull your mic up closer towards you a little bit, and um, and then let's start talking. Let's talk, go th take a walk down the past a little bit. Okay. Talk about the history of the building. Well, the uh, theater and the Performing Arts Center, uh, as it stands right now, was the original Elks Lodge built in 1905 by. Uh, the Brotherhood of Elks Lodge Number 330. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was their home for as long as, oh, must have been about 50 years, maybe a little longer than that. Uh, and the actual lodge itself, um, where we are, is basically the same way uh, that it was built way back then, 115 years ago. Uh, the first floor is retail, second floor was actually at that time was county, the county seat, uh, because this lodge was the first in the, well, it was the territory of Arizona back then, and the lodge itself was the first Elks Lodge built. At the same time, they built the theater. They decided they wanted the theater because there was no entertainment venue in the city of Prescott. And between here and the Mississippi River, this was considered the jewel uh, in the western United States. Uh, there was nothing like it uh, unless you went to San Francisco. Um, so they built the theater, they built the um, the lodge, the top floors were their own private rooms. That's where they did their parties and played their poker and, <laughs> and all of that kind of stuff. And um, you know, in the beginning, the theater had uh, vaudeville acts and silent movies. And then around 1930, 1929, 1930, the talkies appeared. And they had their first uh, talkie movies come in. They had the RCA Victor, state of the art, Wow. talking picture shows it was quite the thing back then and uh, you know after that uh, the theater changed hands the building changed hands uh, time after time after time until finally uh, the performing arts center where Trevor and I are uh, became a private offices for lawyers and the uh, theater was owned by the city of Prescott actually for a period of time. Um, the foundation, the arts foundation that we work for, the Elks Arts Foundation, purchased the theater in 2010 from the city and then our building in 2011, the Performing Arts Center, and undertook a remodel of our building that lasted until oh goodness, to the very, very end of 2016. So we've only been open for two and a half years tops uh, at the best. Weren't there some pretty well-known singers back or performers that came to Prescott back in the early 1900s and 1800s? There were some, but I can't tell you who okay. they were. <laughs> I'd have to go read about them, but there they were when we were cleaning out the bottom of the theater one day we came across all these old posters and information mm -hmm. and they all went over to the charlotte hall museum for them to sort through and find out find out what was important uh and what was relevant to historical reference because i thought i read somewhere i could totally be wrong but i thought maybe jenny lind came and sang at one point here that sounds familiar that and name sounds familiar. um so you know little prescott's been on the map for a long time mm -hmm. yes indeed <laughs> so, yes, so indeed. trevor why don't you talk about where you come from and um how you got involved in in this project which is pretty amazing yeah so um i actually was in the navy for five years and uh, when I got out, we moved here because this is where my wife's from. This is her hometown. Uh -huh. um, so I've really enjoyed living here in Prescott. And uh, one of the things that uh, um, 
I knew is the uh, building, I knew the building owner, or the building uh, manager actually. Okay. And so she asked me, hey, do you want to come in and do the project? I actually uh, have a uh, educational background in business, that's what I went to college for. Oh, and okay. so uh, one of the things that I've really been involved in is uh, developing, you know, the scholarship outreach programs, working with the schools. Um, I developed, did a lot of the development for the uh, um, recording studio and things like that. Some of the more special projects that go on in the Performing Arts Center, I've kind of uh, taken, taken control of. And, and, made those come to fruition. So. That's awesome. And I know I'm kind of getting off script a little bit, so we can, <laughs> you know, but um, let's talk about the fact you mentioned that there's really two, two facilities in, with your, right. within your organization. So let's talk about how that splits up a little yeah. bit. There, it's very true. There is the theater aspect, and then there's the Performing Arts Center. Now, the theater has been in existence for ever, uh, mm -hmm. and they have their musical shows, their theater events, and uh, Colette Greenlee and Jennifer Ward, the managers there, do a great job of, you know, managing that end of the business. And our end of the business is we have the uh, event halls at the top, the ballrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. We have on the second floor is uh, the two dance halls. Uh, one is the Marley floor for ballet with bar. Um, the second one is a uh, hickory floor for tap and other kinds of dance like that. And uh, we rent all of those facilities out uh, to the public for use, uh, very, very affordable rates. Mm -hmm. We are a 501c nonprofit. Uh, and uh, the jewel on the, on the newest jewel on the, th on the second floor mm -hmm. is the recording studio. And I think Trevor can probably certainly talk to you because it was more about that because it was absolutely his project mm -hmm. and he made it happen. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> there had been intention of making a recording studio from the time that we took over the building. It was one of the main mm -hmm. points of having the building was having the classrooms. Each each uh, element of the second and third floor was intentionally made uh, when they re renovated the, the building. Um, to make it more conducive for learning, right? Yeah, as basically well it's supposed to be, exactly. It's supposed to be a learning and performing space. It's, it's okay. supposed to be a community space. We are a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all of our rates are subsidized, and that was one of the subsidized services that we wanted to have. Um, you know, one thing after another, when you open a new building, of course, things come up, and uh, that project had not happened uh, after a year and a half of us being open. So um, I took over uh, that project, and I, I got the quotes in, and we ended up, we have a, uh, there's $25,000 of equipment in there. Wow. Um, we have top of the line um, yeah, Apple products, you know, everything's digital. Uh, we do have a board. We have up to eight channels in there now. Um, mm -hmm. The recording engineer uh, is a you know Arizona hometown recording engineer. He was trained professional in Phoenix. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's gone to school to do this. Uh, we've had several projects that have happened in there. Everything from podcasts to we did recently have a uh, a band cut their uh, their first CD in the building. So oh, that's cool. And to be able to do that at the you know um, and subsidize that and, and have them be able to do that because you know. Um, the the leader of the band actually came up to to Justin Ames, who's the name of the recording engineer, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, "Hey, I wouldn't have been able to do this anywhere else. I would have had to go save up, you know, and, and go to Phoenix, and it would have I would have been out two, three, four times as much." So uh, they were really appreciative of having that space here, and, and so um, <clears throat> really glad that we uh, we were able to put that in. So, and you had to make special accommodations with the building in order to make those um, sound studios work, right? Yeah, so the, basically the way that it works is when the uh, building was originally made, we did have uh, what's called winger sound booths. So they're sound isolation rooms. Mm -hmm. um, basically, when you go in there, it locks all the sound out. It's a professional um, setup. And we have five of those in the building. And those were there when I arrived, which was in January of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we needed to put in the actual uh, channels, um, all of the wiring and the recording equipment. Um, and like I said, just one thing after another happened and uh, it ended up getting postponed until you know, we really made, wanted to make sure that that was in there. So myself and Steve, with Steven's support, we made sure that you know, we were able to get the quotes and get the, uh, the work done in there to be able to have that open. And now we've had you know, pretty uh, steady success with that area. And didn't you have to put in false walls or something? or? You know, for the soundproofing? Not necessarily false walls, but the, uh, the way that the sound booths work is they're mm -hmm. individual um, sound booths that are of different sizes, yes. and they're pre-manufactured that way. Okay. So the walls in between are of those sound booths. Okay. So. Yeah, they're, they're basically prefab, and they're drop-in. Mm -hmm. So 
you could take them out and move them to another part of the building if you so inclined otherwise they just stay where they are but if you go into one of the larger rooms you can see the window the outside window is there because it's just a frame within that frame right yeah. so and and anybody in the community or from Phoenix or whatever can come and and reserve those sound booths for use yeah they're 100 percent open the uh, we do contract with one engineer and the way that we work it is uh, if anybody wants to use the uh, the booths, either he can bring them in from his side mm -hmm. or they can contact us at the Performing Arts Center and uh, we can get them in co uh, connection with each other and they can schedule their, their session. So the rooms come with a professional recording engineer as well and they can book awesome. that um, through us or through him. So okay, we've had so it that's work both great. Ways. And um, I assume how to do that is on your website at some point? Yeah, so... so Actually, uh, speaking of the website, we are rebuilding the website right now, which will okay. have more functionality. Um, at this point, there is information on where the college of general information, but if you call the general number, um, which we'll, we will reiterate at the end of the podcast, but it is 928-756-2844. If you call that number, then we can get you information about any of the services that we have in the second or third floor. Okay, yep. that's great. Absolutely. So, um, so we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but you have a definite mission for uh -huh. how you want to operate within our community and so why don't you talk about that yeah we are we are a 501 c3 and our mission within the community is to promote and support the performing arts so everything we do is with that in mind uh, whether it's the dance studios or even the ballroom use upstairs the, every, the revenues we produce from renting those facilities out it all flows down to the second floor. Uh, a percentage of all of our revenues goes into uh, the community support, the scholarships we have, the, um, um, the music programs that we have. We purchase uh, musical instruments for students that are in need and can't afford them, or for high school students. And Trevor also uh, managed that process. And we just got our first two instruments delivered uh, just a couple of weeks ago Exciting. to Prescott High School students. Mm -hmm. um, just two tubas, correct? Yeah, so it was uh, actually the, the Mile High Middle School. Mile High Middle um, School. Yeah, okay, yes. and uh, we, no. <laughs> It's, uh, we, we work with all of the schools, so right. we have a lot of, of hands in, in the pot here in town. Mm -hmm. So um, for Mile High Middle School, one of the things is we have a scholarship program, so I'll just talk about that briefly. Great. And uh, what we do is every year we fund out of money that we receive through, uh, you know, like Stephen was saying, ballroom rentals, you know, performances in the theater. You know, a portion of that money funnels into a fund, and we fund our scholarship program. Our scholarship program is $6,000. It goes to, this year we're doing three, last year we did one of 6,000, this year we'll be doing three um, of a total of $6,000, mm -hmm. and it goes to Prescott High School students. And uh, we did that program successfully last year for the first time. Um, the student is uh, uh, actually going to, he still stayed in state, so he's at Arizona State University, he's doing well. Um, he is part of the uh, orchestra, band, and drama team over there. And wow. he's uh, currently actually shopping around to uh, perform with a uh, traveling orchestra this, this a professional traveling orchestra this summer. So um, he's doing very well down there. We gave him the first scholarship. But what we decided was that we needed to expand the scholarship program. And so that's where the instruments at Mile High came, came in. Um, I went and talked to um, the directors of the program over there. And uh, I realized that the funding is, is lacking for public... Uh, um, education in, in you know the performing arts and so we decided that you know that's right on our ticket and we wanted mm -hmm. to uh, do something so we we gave them a five thousand dollar budget to pick whatever instruments they wanted to and uh, they chose because of the expense of the instru instruments tubas mm -hmm. um, so uh, they they bought the two tubas and uh, we funded those for them and uh, so now they have kids that would not normally be able to play in the band uh, during their their middle school time uh, are now able to play so so the next time we see the parade coming down in Fresca, whichever parade it is, since there's so many, and we see the Mile High students playing right. tubas, then we, you know, we should all be saying thank you to the Elks Theater and and the um, Performing Arts Center. Right. I think it, I think it's important for everybody to understand uh, that we depend on them for the things that we do. So when they come to us and they have an event upstairs on the third floor or they're going to the theater to one of our movies that we have on Wednesdays or one of the, sh the musical shows or the theatrical events, 
all of that money, well, a portion of that money from everything uh, goes straight into it. We had an event upstairs on the third floor last night with Red Molly that was uh, in conjunction with uh, the, uh, the folk sessions. And mm -hmm. it was a great show. Red Molly was fantastic. But we were able to take a chunk of money that we made there, and I delivered it today to the treasurer. And mm -hmm. that's going to go directly into our fund for the musical instruments or the community outreach or the, uh, the uh, scholarship. Uh, we recently had also, uh, we were funding educational purposes for two young ballet students, 12, 13 year old young ladies. Mm -hmm. And um, we just found out that both of them were accepted into intensive summer courses because of the classes that we were able to support and pay for. Uh, one with the uh, Kirov in San Francisco and the other uh, in, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, the Kirov in Washington, D.C. and the Joffrey in San Francisco. Uh, uh, so the, without the support of the people in the community coming to us and helping us out, we wouldn't have been able to support those two children and get them to achieve their goals of very talented individuals. That's really, that's amazing. And what I think is important is when people think of the Elks, they think of the theater for the most part in our community. And so I think opening up recognition of all the other things you do, because it's, it's limitless right. pretty much, is really important in our community. So, um, so let's start with let's start at the top and work down. How's that? Okay. So talk about the third floor, and you've mentioned the ballrooms a couple times. Yeah. Uh, up on the third floor, we have uh, two different ballrooms: uh, the grand ballroom and the smaller ballroom. Uh, we're working on names for them officially. Um, Can't yeah. get those donors out. You know, yeah. some, <laughs> some nice big yeah. checks. We'll name a ballroom yeah. after you. Uh, uh, that's a thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But the, the larger of the two is about 1,500 square feet. Uh, has, it's on the west side of the building, has barreled ceilings, uh, has uh, awesome views of uh, Thumb Butte and Granite Mountain. Uh, it's all soundproofed to absorb, and it, it, the acoustics are wonderful in the room. There's a full kitchen that's available. Uh, the other side has, uh, it's, it's a, more of a meeting space, uh, but we've had everything from, from weddings to church services in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's about 1,100 square feet, and it has the same barreled ceilings, which are original, by the way. Uh, when the construction began and they were working to remove all of the improvements that had happened over the decades, uh, they found all kinds of amazing things. They found hidden staircases that allowed the Elks to go back and forth between the theater without having to leave the edifice. Uh, they found the barreled ceilings where, and the tin stamp that was on them. And uh, we reproduced a tin stamp from the original design for the entire ceiling. So it's not the original one, but it's a good one. Uh, and there was also, if you look, if you can find some of the old pictures online, you see that the entire front of the building was enclosed for offices. Uh, and as they removed all that uh, superstructure, uh, they found the original clock that was installed by the Elks Lodge back in 1905. It's not a real clock, but it points to 11 o'clock, which mm -hmm. is the traditional uh, time that uh, Elk, the Elks would have a toast to their absent members. Ah. Uh, so it's permanent, and it was there in you know, stained glass, and it was repaired and put back into original shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I've been in those those rooms, and they are stunning. So, they're great for for regular meetings, but mm -hmm. they're also, like you said, I can imagine weddings would be beautiful in there, and um, especially with the kitchen available, that that opens up enormous possibilities. And you have tables and and all of that ready for people too, correct? Yes, we provide the tables and the chairs for free. There's no mm -hmm. extra charge on those. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, business meetings, birthdays, seminars. Uh, services, obviously weddings, uh, you know, receptions, anniversaries. Uh, we're good for just about anything. Yeah, we're, we're pretty happy to accommodate whatever we can. So, and again, they can just call the number, and we will repeat it, and we'll have it in in the information. They can right. just call the number and get more information on on how to rent that and yes. the cost and how and schedule it. Yeah. Do you want to do the second floor or? Yeah, I can do the second floor, why not? Um, so on the second floor, we obviously have the recording studio, which we did talk about. Mm -hmm. um, that is for rent. 
uh, you know, 24 um, seven. And, and that's another, another important, uh, important point that I'd like to, to, to make is that everything in the building is available for 24 uh, seven wow. rental. We do have a turnkey operation. Um, so if there's anything that's outside of normal hours where maybe, you know, we've had some people who have just haven't been able to find space because they need out of normal hours, you know, whether it be right. at night or whether it be um, very first thing in the morning, we can accommodate those. Okay. Now on the second floor, uh, we do have two separate um, dance studios. Okay. They both have about a 50 person occupancy. Um, one is a Marley Ford studio, which is specifically formulated for ballet. It's, uh, it's, it's. <clears throat> a sprung, technically called a sprung Marley floor. Um, it has bars all around it, and it was designed as a ballet studio. We also use it for uh, yoga. Um, we've had meditation classes in there. Anything uh, in that studio where you'd be able to do it barefoot, or at least be able to wear some kind of soft, you know, uh, ballet style shoes, um, then we can accommodate you in that room. For everything else, we have another room which is a uh, hickory floor which we've had everything from tap dance, line dance. Uh, we have swing classes that go in there, um, uh, you know, Zumba classes and other exercise type classes. So we can accommodate a lot of different things. And uh, we've had, if you name a style of dance or you know, uh, exercise class, we've probably already had it in there. So we've, we do host a variety of events. Now, do you have a schedule anywhere that people can see what it is and how to sign up for these classes? Or are they individually run by, by people in the community and you have to sign up through them? So that's going to be um, a, a no on the first one and yes on the second one. Okay. okay. <laughs> so when we get our website up, which we are hoping to have launched within the next uh, couple of months, we will have that capability on there. A calendar will be on there to tell you what events uh, are going to go on where and uh, on what halls, as long as they're public events that you would mm -hmm. be able to attend. Um, but yes, they are by individual instructors. So that is on a case-by-case -case basis of whether the instructor is opening it up for the public or what the purpose of the event is. For some of our instructors, they use it as more of a practice space or maybe they have some kind of a group or troop that's uh, practicing in that room. Um, in that case, obviously, it wouldn't be on there. But anything that's open for the public, where they're going to be charging and they want, you know, they want business, we uh, we do try to advertise them the best we can now. And again, if you call the number, any of these questions, we would, you know, be more than happy to answer. So, on the on the website itself, uh, in the in the top of the website, there is a link for classes that uh, okay. people can click on. And if they click on the link, it'll give them a list of the public classes. Okay. Uh, also in the lobby. All of the instructors keep flyers and business cards and information about their specific classes. So it is out there, uh, and of course they can contact us directly. But you know, we'll, we'll give them the contact information. And what ages are the classes set up for? Is it all adults or? Um... Yeah, so we have all ages. We uh, we actually have a class that is specifically for two to four year olds. Um, that you know teaches them. It's kind of a musical immersion class for mm -hmm. uh, for two to four year olds. It's called music together. Music, ah. Yeah, it's called music together. Um, and in that instruct, that is an open class, so uh -huh. anyone can can come to that class. Um, and then we also have a uh, number of classes that you know, whether by coincidence or intent, are uh, mostly seniors. They're mostly older people. So um, you know, literally ages from you know early childhood all the way through you know. Um, you know, seniors and, and, and older folks, we have something for everybody there. Okay, that sounds yeah. awesome. Yep. So, and um, you mentioned the top floor, mm -hmm. and I know, now doesn't Barry Barb from Elgato, doesn't he put on some special events up there? Yes, as a matter of fact, we have them coming up Monday, uh, Top of the Elks, uh, mm -hmm. second Monday. Uh, we have a, a regular a jazz dance uh, in conjunction with Barry Barb and El Gato Azul and Earl Duque from um, the Flying, Nest. Flying Nest Movement Arts. Thank you. And, uh, and us. And we partnered together to put on a monthly jazz dance where uh, Barry will provide uh, Nosh. Uh -huh. uh, we provide the space, and we have a bar, a uh, cash bar, mm -hmm. that we that we manage wine and beer and soda, water, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And uh, Earl provides dance lessons for swing. Oh. And so, couple, before the before the jazz concert, he'll get everybody up there and teach them some basic steps. And then during the intermission, he'll take them a little bit forwarder, and everybody has a great time, and it's a lot of fun. 
and tickets they can get tickets for those events at the El Gato Azul website. Oh, okay. And do you know how much they cost? Uh, thirty-five dollars okay. uh, per person. Yeah. So you get but your dance lessons, you your food, two dance lessons, and a, food, and uh, music. You get free entertainment. Or you get entertainment. It's not free, but yeah. uh, and of course, then there's the cash bar. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's uh, all you can eat, and you go. I would like to add, you do get a free drink as well. That's ah, right. Yeah, that's, that's right. There we that's, go. That adds yeah. a little bit more value for a yeah. lot of people. So. <laughs> so, and I bet that's something that actually is of interest to you know young couples as well as you know seniors and and all um, all ages would really be interested in that. Yeah, yeah. that's a you know um, I've seen same same thing as as the downstairs. I've seen you know several younger couples come in. I would say that the crowd is generally a little bit older because you know the jazz scene is kind of right. something that they connect with, which is why it's fun mm -hmm. to have you know. But uh, we've definitely seen younger people. You know, I'm, I'm mid-20s. So I've seen people my age and, and younger there. So, Well, my son took a lot of swing lessons when he was going to college down at ASU. So maybe I can get him to bring his wife up there. And they, they, that might be a fun evening for them. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd love to have them. So, uh, and those tickets can be bought uh, through, through Barry Barb. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, Okay, so what's next? I see something about a gallery here and some other things. So, Well, uh, the Theater and Performing Arts Center are not the only things that the foundation is involved with here in the city of Prescott. There is also the Tizot Gallery on Cart Cortez. Right. Uh, and they are, that was actually the first thing that they became involved with here, the foundation. Uh, they remodeled the Tiz building and they created a place where local artists can, uh, this would be the visual arts, um, sculpture, okay. painting, photography, uh, and the other, uh, can bring their wares in display them for a month or more, whatever long the program is that's going on, and be supported by uh, the foundation so that they have a place to locally show their goods because they are all local people and they have to be local to the Prescott area uh, in order to do that. Uh, so there's that, and then up on the second floor, there's a little mezzanine where they have they can do a little private shows uh, for different artists. Uh, also on South Mar North Marina, uh, there is the Tiz Annex, and that opened a few years ago, and it is a educational an art educational for adults and children and they have ongoing classes on in sculpture and painting and and um, drawing uh, and it's run by uh, a wonderful person named patty ortiz and uh, if they contact her they can learn more about it or just go to the website uh, I, see, I'd never heard of the Tiz Annex yeah. before, so that's awesome. I have been upstairs in the Tiz building for various meetings, and mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful it's a wonderful meeting place too, you know. And I, I again, a lot of these things you're telling us about are kind of some hidden gems in our community, and especially for people who think, oh, there's no place to meet, there's no place to go. And what you're saying here is that there's a lot of places to to come to. Yes, and a lot of things to do. And if you're interested in different classes or, or learning about these things things is you know it's easy to reach out to us either through the website or email or the phone and we're happy to help okay so let's talk about the theater the part everybody knows about yep. and um, what are some of the events coming up the next couple months well this weekend itself uh, we have uh, menopause the musical uh, which is on the, the, the 6th and 7th, and that's, that's coming up uh, uh, very soon. They're in there doing practice right now, uh, setting up the stage and everything. And uh, we have uh, a number of shows, uh, musical shows that are coming up. Uh, the Eagles Tributes on the 19th and 20th, but they are fully sold out. They always sell out, so the next time they come around, get your tickets early. <laughs> um, and then on 5-4, uh, uh, the Credence Clearwater Tribute Band is in. Uh, then we have on the 10th, the Jilbert Steel Drum Band, and these are a group of uh, uh, high school age students from the Phoenix area who provide are doing a benefit in the 
uh, theater, and 50% of the revenues that we garner from that will go directly to the outreach programs, the scholarships, and the music programs, and everything else that we have. They're a wonderful group of kids, and if you've never seen them, you you really, really, really need to go and check them out. Yeah. So, and I mean, steel drums are really cool anyway. Yeah. You know, there's just a lot of fun to listen to, and it's amazing. So, okay, and next uh then we have esteban on mother's day uh he's doing a special concert for mother's day at three o'clock uh that's always a lot of fun he's a perennial favorite in the town and, and always uh, puts on a good show uh after that we have uh, a couple more tributes uh crosby stills nash and young and queen on the 18th and 31st kind of rounding out the month mm -hmm. uh and then there's movie, and that's movies, the movies, movies, movies. That's out. the month of, month okay. of May. Yes, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have movies. Uh, we started showing movies again in the theater. How long ago, Trevor? A year and a half. Or yeah, I'd say it's probably early 2018. So. Yeah, yeah. And we we did it on the lark. We didn't know whether or not it would you know work out, and mm -hmm. the community loved it. And we now uh, seasonally have movies every Wednesday at seven o'clock in the theater. Uh, it's donation only, and the proceeds, again, go to the uh, outreach program. So if you want to give us a dollar, we'll take a dollar. If you want to give us 20 bucks, we're happy to take that, too, right. and go in and see a great movie. Uh, and coming up on the 17th is uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, always a hoot. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, we've got a little more serious, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest on uh, 424. And that's kind of a classic. Yeah. I remember when I was pretty young, you know, seeing that movie. So. And, and we get a lot of that. And that's one, one of the things that they try to balance is doing some of the newer stuff, um, especially kid stuff. Um, you know, to have like a family type night and then doing some of the stuff like this, uh, the one flew over the cuckoo's nest where it's, you know, a lot of people will come up to the manager, the theater manager, Colette, and say, I haven't seen this since I was in, in theater since, you know, however long ago. And they really enjoy being able to do that because, you know, there's very few places that do that anymore. Well, and the other thing I think it's really important to point out is that, yes, it's fun to watch movies on YouTube, but there is nothing like seeing a movie in a theater. Right. And with the popcorn and with the beverages and all that, I mean, it's the experience is totally different. It's it's just not the same. Right. We we got that a lot. Uh, the response is pretty normal. Like especially we did some of the older movies when we did The Wizard of Oz or Gone with the Wind and some of those. Mm -hmm. they, they, people never seen it on the big screen and, and we're amazed because they've only seen it on TV. Uh, so it's a totally different experience, like you said. Yeah. Know, absolutely. Um, so then we get into the month of May. Um, the Blues Brothers uh, is coming, the original Blues Brothers, with uh, Dan Aykroyd and Joy Belushi. Uh, the Chicago, the movie, which I've never seen myself, so I can't talk too much about that one. And then uh, Coco uh, rounds out the month of, uh, of May for us. And once we get into June, uh, Colette uh, has arranged with the City of Prescott uh, Tourism. The movies that they used to have on the Courthouse Square uh, have now moved into the theater. So every Wednesday we will have a movie that has been selected by the, basically by the Tourism Board, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we will be showing those in the theater and the same thing deals. It's, it's open admission, it's donation only, and the proceeds uh, benefit the outreach programs that we all get involved in that sounds great and yep. I think that's another important point to kind of look at and that is that you're not operating in a vacuum you have a lot of partnerships with various organizations mm -hmm. across the city you know the city of Prescott itself and various other communities so, so. well and, and one of the things to, to point out with that is um, you know I lived in in Southern California and Stephen did as well um, mm -hmm. uh, for a very long time and so the community here is uh, you know a big factor in the success that we've had um, you know more than just being a historical building we've been able to build a sense of community I mean uh, for us even you know the Hacienda right next door to us does a lot mm -hmm. of weddings but you know this is such a tight-knit town that sometimes we'll pass weddings back and forth to each right. other because you know we know that it might suit a couple better or you know one way or the other and so, um, you know, we've had no problem being able to um, uh, work with the city or with, you know, the different businesses that are in town. And that's one of the things that's really helped us. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, vice versa with them. You know, we've been able to help them a lot and, and help grow some of their stuff. So, it's And that's awesome. So, yep. I mean, we are... 
I mean, we're Prescott, but we're we're everyone's hometown, you know. And I mean, I think we take pride in that, and we we like working together on these things. Yes. So, um, okay. So, what else did we miss? Well, uh, there's the theater events, and then we have separate events that go on in the Performing Arts Center, and we are currently building this. Um, program mm -hmm. well i mentioned the red molly that was the first that we've had mm -hmm. the uh teamwork with el gato azul and uh the flying nest that's been going on for about a year now but it's still relatively fresh um so at the top at the at the elks we uh we also have partnerships uh with uh, the mile high comedy theater They'll be coming in and doing some educational seminars on comedy and how to be a comic. And then they'll be doing a uh, show afterwards. And it, as I understand it, and it's still in development, that it's going to be basically an open mic. Uh, and it'll be $5 to get in the door. You come in if you want to go up there and be a comic and go what, for it. <laughs> what a great way to get started, you yeah. know, and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely. a feeling some of the jokes maybe fall a little flat. <laughs> some of them, sometimes you know you don't know what is funny. I, when um, my boys were little, one of them said something. We were all sitting around the table, and he was sitting in the high chair, and he said something. I don't remember what it was, and we all it made us all laugh. And he looked at us and he said, "Not funny, guys." <laughs> and that made us laugh more, you know. And so he kind of liked that. So he kept saying, "Not funny, guys," and we'd all laugh and not fun, you know. And so I, I, you know, that was this little family theater. But uh -huh. this is you're talking about people coming in and seeing what's funny and what's not funny, guys. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Uh, I had a conversation this morning with a gentleman who is John, who is just just in the infancy of working a program for developing actors and he's looking for a space to possibly have them come in so he can give them acting lessons and that would be right in our ballpark and it would be perfect and we'll see how that works out so that just happened this morning and hopefully we'll have something at the end of the month uh, to show on that uh, but back to the after that uh, we have our next top of the elks on 513 which is uh, mint they will be going. And then on 610, uh, the next uh, Top of the Elks event, uh, One Kitty Gone, which is a new band we've never seen before or heard. So that should prove interesting. Um, and then our second in the Folk Session series uh, with Tom Agostino, uh, happening in June, uh, will be with the T-Sisters. And they are a group out of San Francisco. Uh, listen to some of their music. They are really good uh, folk, uh, blues, just wonderful sound, great harmonies, and really looking forward. And tickets are available at uh, the Folk Session website um, through them. There you can find that information on our website, um, but they're available through them. Okay. And then uh, one last event we have in April was our mid-century modern happy hour. And that's going to, this is the first ever event. And mm -hmm. it's uh, the Mingus Mountain Boptet is going to be providing the music. And the uh, Prescott Eats will be providing food for sale. We'll have a cash beer and wine bar. And everybody needs to get their, uh, get their 1950s bouffant done and their skinny ties on and come on down and, and sh shake some bones. Well, that sounds like that's a lot of fun. So um, to reiterate, they can contact you by going to the website. Right. And, um, and is that just Elks Theater website? What's the Prescott Elks Theater is the home the, of the website? The website itself, the website address is www.prescottelkstheater.com. Uh, the Facebook is facebook.com. Uh, slash Prescott Elks Opera House okay. and the general information email if they just want to send us a message and ask some general questions is uh, info at etpac.org it's info at etpac.org and that will get you information from both the theater and the performing arts center all in one so it sounds like you have a lot going on. How much do you have time available for people to book events? I mean, you're not booked out, are you? No, we're definitely not booked out. We definitely have plenty of, of, of space available. Okay. Um, you know, and, and one of the things I want to say, I think we're getting close to the end. So one of the things I want to say before we, uh, we, we sign off 
is that no matter who you are, if you have any interest in the performing arts, if you have a, you know, if you're a small business and you've been looking to want to do some kind of a seminar, um, if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be able to do some kind of a seminar, when, no matter who you are, we have a space available for you. We can work with you. We have different rates available. We we're not opposed to doing deals for the right, you know, uh -huh. uh, you know, for the right event that's going on. Um, so there's a place, uh, a space, and a price for you here at the Performing Arts Center. Um, you know, so don't be afraid to call and, and ask us. You know. Okay, sounds yes. great. Do you have anything you want to add? No. Uh, thank you for inviting us in to talk about this. I think it's important that the community knows that we exist and that there's a great opportunity to partner with us to support uh, the local community as far as the arts go. Okay, sounds great. And we will see you at the end of the month. And I think you're going to talk about some more of the specific events that are happening then. So, yes. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, Facebook. Bye.